Hello everybody, welcome to my video. Today we're playing on CC4 today. See by the screen, playing a tremendous game. It's Wadlan, copyright 1990, published by Storm, produced by South Curve Limited. I've long played the Amiga version, now it's time to do the CC4 version. It's going to be a difficult day, it always is. But anyway, it's what I do for my videos. It's Jamie Wadlan's games, Wadlan. Let's go. Okay, so the game is Rodland on the CG4. Rodland's a 1990 arcade game, which is developed and published by Jellico. The player controls one of two fairies called Talon Rit, armed with a magical wand. Following the concept of Chateau's Bubble Bobble, the rod doesn't kill the monsters directly, only leaves them mobilised and crying. To kill them, the rod must grasp them in a magical field, and the player must slam them over the head to disappear and leave a power up behind. It's tough, really tough game though, really fast. Now each level is done by a single screen, collect all the flowers and you activate the extra game. That allows you to get additional letters to spell the word extra. Spell extra and you get additional life. Kill all the enemies and you move on. At the moment we've got X, T and A. That will not get us an extra life but it will help towards it. Right, these are spuds. I'll talk about each character over the course of the game. We need two more letters, Q the extra game and this is limited. Time is limited. Right, we need an E. We got it. We also need an R. Should do it with two remaining on the screen. E, X, T. Aha! We have it. Little pal. Extra. Here, take this life energy and good luck. They'll gain you another life. Superb. Only this version and the Amiga version I've played. Okay, we have four lives now. Now, each level is only one small screen, composed of monsters, platforms, ladders, and later on, tunnels. Unlike other games in the genre, the players cannot jump, but instead they have to use ladders. They can also conjure one custom ladder above or below them in order to get to the appropriate platform. And we do it by using the rainbow boots, which in the old days, I didn't know we had rainbow boots. So, as you expect, in the old days, I didn't get very far. But you cannot use the magic wand on a ladder, but apparently in other versions you can. Right, extra game. Let's get that extra. Which is limited time. We've got E, R and A. Move on. That is stage 3 onto stage 4. This game also has 4 boss battles. Right, these are called sharks, believe it or not. Do not let yourself be fooled by their tears. Touching a tear leads to death. They'll be killed by a tear. Right, we need a few more letters. Now, each character needs three slams to kill them. Unless you're going to be using a power-up. That will be an instant kill for them. But again, I'll get to that when I get to them. Now, when you touch that power-up, it will activate immediately. But, we're going to get the flowers. Cue the extra game. Right, again, limited time. The more you progress into the game, the faster it gets. You need an X. R. A. E. X. Extra. Superb. In the early stages of the game, it's the best time to get these additional lights. Take this life energy and good luck. There we go. That'll give us five lights. Okay, scene five. Now this one we have balloons. We can use the balloons, but then so can the enemy. And we have wasps. Wasps, when you see them, you better make a run for it, or you can kill them as quickly as possible, however, they're the only creature that can fly. They can fly, but when you queue the extra game, they lose their ability to fly. Right, extra game. But wait patiently, wait to get to my level, which is going to be difficult because there's two of them together. <coughs> get those letters. There you go. Only a four will come up here to be hit by magical wands. There we go. T, extra, is what we need. Now, sometimes they'll climb the ladders and sometimes they won't, but yeah, that was a lot quicker that time. Dynamite, have some of that. No, he didn't. Right, he's making a run for it. You coward! Weapons and their impacts. When one of the evil creatures is killed by a magical rod, there appears a weapon at its place. The weapon is activated immediately when you touch it. There we go. Right, X, T and R is what we have in terms of the extra. Next level is this scene six. We have spuds. Spuds, they have the mean habit of duplicating themselves. It's best to let them live until you've collected all the flowers to activate the extra letters to get more lives as possible, or when possible. Okay, they can also climb the ladders. Every creature can climb ladders. Whether they have legs or not, they can climb. Right, lots of flowers, but we're going to try and get down another life. We'll try to anyway. Extra game is in place. 
They can also kill enemies by slamming them into others. Now, that doesn't feature in the Amiga version. I didn't know a lot about that. There we go. Another life. Doing well on the life front. Here, take this life energy. And good luck. Scene 7. These are called Nessies. They constantly have a ravenous appetite. If on the same plane as you, they'll go after you. Right, pick up. Balls. These four balls will be similar to balls on the billiards table. Over the whole screen, explode after some time. If they touch one of the creatures, they'll turn into a piece of fruit. Pick up a piece of fruit will reward you, depending on what type of fruit it is. Anything from 1,000, 2,000 to 3,000 points. Right, let's try and get all these flowers. How about some of you pick up some serious speed? The creatures, not the flowers. But yeah, they are difficult to avoid. My lord, but when they're stunned, you can't be harmed by them. My lord. We all this for a few flowers. Which is rewarding, of course. Right, extra game. Three characters, three possibilities for letters. Right, we have E and R. Which is a TV program, I'm sure. Uh, e, X. There we go. EXR. Right, scene 8 complete. On to the boss battle now. Now the boss battles in this game are a lot more fast paced. This one has lots and lots of crocodiles. Three on each side. This is where two player will be very, very handy. Because one cat's going on one side and one cat's going on the other. You've got to hit them repeatedly in the nose. So it's best to get rid of one side first. But yeah, you can use your magical wand so much faster than this one. There we go. Brilliant. That should be making it so much easier now. Keep your distance and it should be fine. Don't be killed by baby versions of themselves. Scene 8. There we go. I have you exactly where I want you. There we go. Bingo. Get up and down like yo-yos. Have some of that. Boop boop pow. There we go. Cue the fireworks display. Expertly done. After a short loading time, we arrive at scene 9. Now, these are called polymorphs. Polymorphs contain a hidden surprise. Like the Desis, they can also see you if you're on the same plane as you. In case of an attack, just build a ladder and take flight. They have a deadly tongue. What do we really do? Don't be killed by an evil polymorph tongue. Right, we've got plenty of enemies on the screen to get the job done. We need two more letters. And we have four roses. There we go. Boom, pow. Cue the extra game. We need a T. And we need an A. However, the more we progress... This extra time game is reduced. There we go. Superb. Another extra, another extra life. Cue the fairy. Here, take this life energy and good luck. I'll use it wisely, I always do. Go in a game like this. Okay, we've got another life. Right, this is scene 10. Other weapons we get in the game. We also get pockets. The rocket is fired horizontally in a running direction and destroys any creature that's caught in the fire line. Dynamite. The dynamite works horizontally in both directions. And the bomb. The bomb destroys anything in the immediate surroundings. Further weapons is the super, a diamond shaped letter, ice crystals and a flame which is a fire finger. Now the enemies in this version are a lot smarter, they're not stupid. Right, we'll try and get some more lifes. So we get those flowers. This is scene 11. Now, when the enemies are stunned, they can't harm you. Right, A. But deal with them quickly, because some of you pick up some serious speed. There we go. R, A, E. Need that. E. Boom! There's another one. Superb. Extra. Here, take this life energy. Unfortunately, we've extended the life so much, don't actually appear at the top left corner of the screen. I don't think they do. There you go. And we get another 10,000 points. The famous quest is to rescue the mother trapped in a tower. In the sequel, part of the original arcade machine, they must venture into a pyramid to stop an evil force from building a mobile fortress. The spirit of the departed father guides them a couple of points. The ending implies that the evil in the pyramid is somehow responsible for the father's death. Okay, more evil wasps. Doing what they do best. Fly around, but picking up all the flowers is going to stop them in their tracks. Certainly in their flying ways, anyway. Right, three more flowers. Three flowers, three evil wasps. There we go. So we can get, in a short space of time, we have to be able to. We've got a tea. 
Pokemon X. Right, is he going to come up here? No, he's not that stupid. X, T, and R. Bingo. Right, on we go. Uh, scene 13. Right, new enemies. These are foxes called bushies. These are just furry fakes. So they're relatively slow and easy to hunt down. And they don't fire at you. They don't fire at all, which is good. But sometimes they pick up a little bit of speed. Right, so you can see what I'm going to be doing now, can't you? Try and get another extra life. The more, the better. Should be easy done. Right, we have uh, an A to find. One, two, three. R and A. There we go, number one. Doing well this is, scene 13, another life we have. Take this life energy, another 10,000 points, and good luck. Thank you. Scene 14. Originally, the coin op arcade game, Rodland, was ported to many other systems. The first being the Amstel CBC version, released in 1990, and the last was the Game Boy version, released in 1993. This excludes monetarized remakes such as the version for Symbian Mobiles in 2006. Home versions of the game were created by Sales Curve from the London Development Office. The Amiga Atari ST version was coded by Ronald Wiserek and John Crowdy. The CD4 version by Steve Snake and the Spectrum version by Jason McGann and Sean McClure. And the NES version by Simon Pick, Jules Watcham and Steve Snake. And the NES version was only released in Japan. Spain, Italy, and the Netherlands. The Amiga version was ranked the 16th best game of all time for Amiga Power. Right. Now we're talking to Rigor doing this. Right, boom, boom, double boom. You didn't do anything though. Now, if you so wish, you can use these tunnels. And also, if you wish, you get those flowers. We're going to go for it and try and get through this game. We've got plenty of lives now. Not far away from the next boss. The next boss is a whale. In these versions, it differ in some way, particularly the NES version, which adds more platform stages, allowing the player to jump. But by far, the biggest difference is that arcade version includes totally different sequel with new graphics, levels, bosses, and storyline. On completion of the original game, the enemies in the second story are more robotic. The sequel can be accessible directly at the start of the game if the joystick is moved down three times between inserting coin and pressing 1P and 2P buttons. There you go. Have to admit, I've never seen that. It's interesting. Right, killed a polymorph and we've got to kill a bushy. He's going to get a shock of his life. There we go. Scorch him to death. Right, boss battle. Should be anyway. Flash of the screen confirms it. Now, in the Amiga version, you have to hit him in the eye, and the eye only. Here, you can hit him anywhere. And also, you cannot use ladders. We'll do it about. I love the sound effects. Sounds like a shoot em up. But yeah, this is, again, a really, really fast pace. I love it. Deal with those babies. They're the only thing that can harm you. Give them one at a time. There we go. Right. Woohoo! There we go. Superb. Scene 16 done. Cue the second virus display. Scene 17. Now we've got bunnies. When they grasp the carrot, it's time to run away. They'll whiz over the screen. That makes them faster. There's a few enemies like that. Go you know, short and sweet. One player or two players simultaneously. Genre is a platform action game originally released in April 1990. Released for Arcade, Amiga, Amstel CPC, Atari ST, CG4, Game Boy, NES, ZX Spectrum and iOS. This one and the Amiga versions are the only versions I've played. But the Amiga version completed many, many times. And those enemies there will shoot water at you. I don't know what they're called, doesn't say in the manual, but they only shoot up. Right, extra game. Let's get some letters, shall we? Take it nice and easy. Okay, I've got an E. Uh, another, uh, another E. X, T. There we go. Also, if you take too long in the levels, enemies will turn into blue meanies. Their name already implies it. They only appear if you take too long to pe complete the level. Right, monkey. I think I'll make meat, meat, meat alone. There we go. Short and sweet once again. On to scene 20. Right, we need two more letters. Let's get rid of some of these enemies first. There's too many to deal with. Right, um... I'll go for it. There you go. 
get those collector balls. There you go. 211,050 points. What have we got now? More monkeys and more unnamed enemies. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, not many enemies that shoot. But they're all a handful in their own ways. 21. On to 22. Right, more wasps. But also, you can't pop the balloons with your magic wands. But again, other versions you can. So yeah, quite a few differences. There we go. You can avoid it. He did. You can also go underneath them. Right. Now, you don't know this your life through score. Right, now we have more monkeys. And again, I'm not going to call them these old ones. But if you're above them, watch out for their water attacks. There you go, rocket. Now the next boss is an elephant. Only four bosses in this game. Right, but more wasps. More bunny rabbits. Now in the Amiga version, you cannot kill other enemies by slamming them into them. It only stuns them. Yeah, quite different. It's amazing how much differences there are in these versions. Right, okay, one, two, three. There you go. Avoids that, he did well. He did very well there. Ugh. Usually it's a wasp chasing me, now I'm chasing the wasp. My lord, he's a really fast wasp. Come here, come back to Earth, please! Blimey, like, how difficult was that? Blew him up! Scene 24, 25 on the way. Right, elephant. Again, don't be killed by miniature versions of himself. Again, hit him anywhere, but only when he's on the floor. But again, quite different because in the Mega version, you also have platforms. And again, you can't use your ladders. You'll be sat on by an elephant. Not many places you can hit him, so just hit him in the feet. He does fall a lot more often. And the more bosses you progress into, the more hits they take. You get some really, really fast attacks in. There we go! Boo pow! He falls down. There we go, cue the fireworks display. 227,500 points, and we got three letters. Okay, scene 25. We have Starfish. They had their own version of an Australian hobby. Beware of their boomerangs. In the Game Boy version specifically, the players can strike enemies with a wand in both time and ladders, making the game slightly easier to play. One of them was followed by a 992 puzzle spin-off title game, Soldam. Which I have to admit, I've never actually played, never actually seen. Right, we need two more letters, but... Yeah, we're going to this one really quickly. 26 done, 27 on the way. Points, 229,500 points. Right, again, new enemy. You've got a lobster with extended pictures. And the bird, which doesn't do anything, but occasionally does speak up a little bit of speed. And I've known to do that. Alright, you can also hit them through the wall. Right, two more letters. There are 32 levels in this game. One more boss remains, and by far the most difficult. And it's the only boss in the Mega version that I've never actually finished without dying. It gets me every single time. Okay, we got a lot of birds here and a lot of roses in the air. So let's slam them to the ground. Alright, this one again, we'll go for a speed run. Okay, that will definitely do it. There we go. Let's try and get two more letters. Uh, again, we've got these boulders. Again, wasps. Never a nice thing. Ugh. There we go. We nuked him. Blimey. Dangerous. There we go. Not on the go. Don't want to waste these letters. Really, really don't. All we need is two. Let these flowers. Some of them are quite difficult to get because you've got to go under these boulders or over them, whatever the case may be. Stage 30. No character is not the fastest, but you are slightly faster in this one than you are in the Liga version. Okay. 
Are we going to get lucky? Are we going to get lucky? I don't know. We'll try. A? Yes, I have that. All we need now is an R. Woohoo! Superb! <laughs> Got plenty of lice to get the job done. Right, two levels to go. Here, take this life energy and good luck. We're going to need it. Okay, scene 31. We've got lobsters and extended reach. Now, every individual level is done by a single screen. While other versions feature nice detailed backgrounds, this version contains a black background. This seems to make the game clearer and above all, very quick. And the single characters are designed with great detail in shape and colour and are mainly alive through the successful animation. On the upper edge of the both players' screens, the number of lives left on level scene are displayed. You can also see the letters of the word extra you've already collected. There we go, as far as you get, you must first defeat me if you want to rescue your mum. Okay, final boss, stage 32. At the moment, he's very, very small. At the moment of time, my character is very small. The trouble is, I stay that way, he doesn't. In the Mega version, it goes through four phases. This one, three. But as a result of that, it takes more hits. And that's got, not good for someone that is very, very fast. And the trouble is, my character is not fast. Absolutely not. But he's bouncing up and down like he's on a pogo stick. So just go from left to right and attack him with your magical wand. And also, you can't go to full length of the screen. That's the furthest you can go. So he can go a lot further than me. Right, next phase. And he does his usual up down downy sort of attacks, but now he's flying while doing it. You can't use your ladders. You've got to be so quick, but the trouble is you're not quick. That's the problem. Hit in the foot, that's all you can do. Okay. But again, no energy bar. And no boss battle music, which is a shame, but desperately needs it. One more phase after this. Ah, stamped on me and I turned into a miniature version of myself. Oh, and again. So much easier if your character was faster. Um, right, go, go, go. One more phase to go. There we go, final phase. Again, it's difficult. Uh, but also, it does teleportation. Again, we've got to hit him in the foot. We can't hit him anywhere else. It doesn't throw out quite as many miniature versions as he would do in the Amiga version. But, when they're close together, it's difficult to do. Right, it's not a death. But when he's up there, you can't get to him because you can't use your ladders here. And JB on the wrong side again. On the other side. When he trans when he transforms to somewhere else on the screen, he's flashing. That you're actually safe from him from that point. We're hitting the foot. Yeah, you can't use your ladders. Right, mate. Get away from him. Start to run away when you're very slow. We're running at fairy speed. Okay, yeah, this is the final phase. No more phases after this. In the bigger version, it goes to full length of the screen. Oh, that's another death. Oh, my lord. Every version I've played, I've never got past this boss without dying. The Mega version I've played so many times, I really have. I still cannot do it without dying. Can't be much more to go, surely. Lives are fading away. Two left. I'll get many attacks in, that's the problem. Gobby it now, surely. No, still going. Like a yourself, buddy. 
Even though it's not a bunny, it's a ball. Oh my lord. Look at my lights. Same old story. Same old story. Every time I play these games, I get so many lives and I lose them all at the end. There we go. Superb. Boss clear. 10,000 points. Okay everybody, this is my video. That is Wondon on the CZ4, absolutely superb game. But once again, that ending level boss took all my lights away. But anyway, this is Jamie from Wondon's Games. Please like this, comment, and share. Please subscribe to my channel, visit fan page, miss out on Twitch. This time in Wondon's Games, you find it fairly easy. Please remember to click the bell icon, that notifies you visit Love Vetting. For the digital videos, you haven't been making and live streams every Friday night, you can find a very hot time away. Tell us something easy. Ciao bye, see ya. Okay, this is another game, this is Bubble Bubble. Jamie, Bubble Bubble does feature on your statistic page, but it's not actually the name of the game. This is Rodlands. You should know that. But it's good fun. Now, each level is done by a single screen. You kill all the enemies on the screen, and you move on to the next level. Kill all the enemies, and you get the extra gu- That's wrong. Rodlands is a 1990 arcade game, originally developed and published by Jellico. The player controls one or two fairies with- uh, mm. Right, each level is done by a single screen. Kill all the enemies and you move on to the next screen. Now, if you collect all the flowers in the screen, you'll activate the extra game. Enemies are... They can also conjure one custom ladder using the rainbow boots. Which you use to go below or 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 below